Ciao, I'm Ariane Esposito. And I'm Father Jonathan DeFelice. Today we're making two wonderful Neapolitan treats, struffoli e cenci. That's it, real fast, real fast. Come on, get that baseball arm moving. Oh, oh Okay. Okay. Don't shake ketchup. No. Basta. <laughs> si. Sono molto delicato. Mm, molto delicato. Grazie a lei. Grazie, Valiana. Grazie a voi. You know, my mother's favorite leftover sandwich. Come on, you're Italian. <laughs> oh, this beautiful. Look at how pretty this is. It's delicious. How do you like that? I think, I think you're great. <laughs> And now we're ready to do the twist. So, looks gorgeous, smells wonderful. I use my hands. I love this woman. Okay. <laughs> St. Anselm College in Manchester, New Hampshire has a long tradition of academic excellence. Founded in 1889 by Benedictine monks, the students study not only the works of civilization's great men and women, but the people themselves. As president, Father Jonathan De Felice helps guide over 2,000 students along the path toward their college degrees. It's a lot of work for him and the faculty and staff at St. Anselm, but the satisfaction they get makes all their efforts worthwhile. Whenever he has free time, Father Jonathan loves to cook for his fellow monks. And today, we're in the monastery kitchen, getting ready to make something truly divine for you. Okay, Father Jonathan, so you know, you and I, we both grew up with struffoli, right? We did. It's a, it's a, it's a popular Neapolitan dessert. We usually have it at Christmas, ho Christmas holiday time. Easter. Easter. Right. And everybody makes theirs a little different because you know that's the way Italy is. There's right. nothing written down. It's all up here, right? right. Exactly. All right, so you're going to show me your version of struffoli. Great. We're going to start. This is actually my grandmother Balzano's recipe, my mother's, mother's recipe that I got from her. And we uh, start by uh, mixing six eggs. Mm -hmm. And we need to save at least one of the shells because I'll explain that in just a moment. Okay. Um, and your grandmother Balzano was from where, Naples? From Ottaviano, which is just on the other side of Mount Vesuvius. So mm -hmm. it is that Naples area. Yeah. And um, she was a marvelous cook, but didn't write down any recipes. So the re this recipe that I have is a little odd in that the measurements um, are in the half of an eggshell. I love so, that. So we have six eggs. We're going to take six half shells of oil. And I use corn oil, but you can use vegetable oil or light olive oil. Yeah, olive oil would be good. Um, and somehow this always works, even though the eggs might vary in size, um, or the half of the shell might vary in size. So I you had six more. of those? Six of the oil. I would say probably about a half a cup total. Just about. Yeah. And then we have four half shells of water. OK. Maybe One. a little more than a quarter of a cup, third of a cup, probably. maybe? That's probably about mm -hmm. right. And that's it. That's a very simple dough. Then we mix these uh, together. Mm -hmm. Now, how often do you, uh, you may only make this at holiday, right? You make this make at holiday, right. Yeah. Um, and special occasions. It was always something that was brought out for uh, big occasions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, at weddings. Actually, when I was ordained a priest, we had a sort of reception, like a wedding reception afterwards. <laughs> and my mother and her sisters, made trays of these yes. for, for people. For everyone to take home. Exactly. Isn't that the way it works? Absolutely. OK. So now we've got the eggs mixed. We're going yep. to take five about five cups of flour. And you already measured that. And I did measure that ahead of time. And then we make a little well. And I, um, you could do this right on the table if you're very courageous. Mm -hmm. But you'd uh, have but to I'm, say three Hail Marys. Uh, that's first. right, I would. Uh, <laughs> and then we uh, add the eggs to the flour. So this is basically like you were making a pasta dough. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very, very similar to a pasta dough. And then you just work the uh, egg mixture in. Now I notice you didn't use any sugar. No sugar. And you used no salt. No salt. Do you know where the word struffoli comes from? That I don't know. Well, you know, it actually comes from a Greek word. 
Ah. Struphalus, ah. which means a little rounded body. Ah. So when we get to forming these, it'll make sense, right? It will Why make sense. Why they're called struphalus. Exactly. And uh, I've made these uh, here in the monastery for my community at Christmas time. It's always a big hit. Now let's and tell them if it's, this is all in the feel, right? It is in You've the feel. You've made these so many times that right. you know exactly how that dough right. should feel. But if there was, let's say that it was a little bit too dry. If it was a little bit too dry, it probably had a little more water since uh -huh. there's already more oil uh, than water in here. Yeah. Um, and and if, it, if it was, was too wet, um, if it doesn't, uh, if it needs more flour, as you can see, I have some extra flour there just in case. But once this starts to come together as it is now, that this is the miracle to me is that with that crazy recipe of half shells, it that it together. actually does come together. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the fascinating things about the recipe. Now, are you going to knead that in the bowl? or I'm you going to take it out and knead it once I get it all sort of together here. Mm -hmm. And it's probably just about It looks right. nice and soft. Can I have yeah, a feel? Sure, please. Oh, yeah. That's, I don't think you need anything. Okay. I think you just need to put a little flour on your board. On the board, and we'll knead it for a little while. Okay. Okay. And I, that, this is an important step, I think, at least my mother always did. My mother um, was a great cook, and um, she had no daughters, so my brother and I learned a lot uh, from my mother about cooking. Mm -hmm. And she always said, you need to take your time with this because you've got to need it enough so that the dough gets smooth, which it will right. do. Right, because you're working the gluten in the exactly. dough. Exactly. And um, this was one of those things. I very frequently have to make it on my own, but it was something my mother never really did alone. She always did it with my aunt, her younger sister. That's <laughs> um, right, because there were always so many help. people in an it, Italian family exactly, ready to cook, right? Exactly, exactly. And you needed help frying and help rolling. So this is forming nicely now. It's wonderful, as you know so well, that trying to preserve some family recipes and traditions is something that's important in our family, too. Um, my nephew is very anxious for me to digitize all of our, the recipes, so, so he this. has them. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. And uh, we haven't really started that project yet, but he, every time he sees me, he tells me it's time to get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> so once the uh, dough has rested a little while, mm -hmm. uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. um, I usually use a bench cutter, but you obviously you can use a, uh, a knife or whatever, chop off a little piece, mm -hmm. and then roll it out into a uh, little log or roll yeah. and as I said I, I usually try to make it about a half an inch or so uh, wide the pieces. We always used to say it had to be the thickness of your middle finger. Ah uh, yes. See that's, that's right. that goes along with the half eggshell Exactly. Thing. So there you are. Well can that's I a, have a piece? Oh well, sure. Why not? <laughs> I might as well help you while i Yeah that'll I'm be great. Okay. And uh, so we ro to roll it out till it's about that length mm -hmm. and then I just use the same uh, cutter or you can use a knife and cut this into small pieces. It's a very it's, nice dough. Very nice. You don't need any flour well, you could to. Thank Grandma Belzano for that. Okay. Well, you do. <laughs> and make for my mother small. for preserving it. So, so this is what I do. All right. And okay. then when they're done, I just take them and uh, don't actually roll them. I just sort of pinch them, pinch the sharp edges down, and then put them on a uh, clean towel until they're ready to fry. You it's, pinch the little edges down. Just a little bit. Oh, just, look, you know. mine are already pinched. <laughs> <laughs> but just uh, well, so you now don't have you, to get too... Now too... you know where the uh, the name, uh, little right. round thing, That's right. Struffoli, comes, comes from. And so now we're going to put them on... Put them on the... Uh, our towel here. You could use a little flour could, on here yes. if you wanted to, just to keep Particularly them. if you're going to cut a lot at once mm -hmm. uh, so they don't stick. Yeah. If, we're not, if we don't keep them on there too long, we'll be all set. You know, in Italy at carnival time, mm. this is a typical uh, sweet that you would have. Right, out on the uh, streets a lot, right. too. They just make them right out Just before Lent, the streets. you would have this. That's right. Uh, get in all, many get of all the of your sweets in before in you give them up, right? Because, you know, in Italy, everything is about food. Everything yeah. is about celebrating the culture, right? It is, and, and it's got good, wholesome ingredients in it. 
And I'm glad that you, as a college president, <laughs> are keeping this tradition alive because well, I think that that's what education is all about. Well, I, you're right, and I alive. think you've you've done a lot for uh, for us as well, um, all of us in education in terms of trying to preserve our Italian culture and heritage. And because we want this food. to be passed on Absolutely. to the next generation. Absolutely. All right, let's keep going because this okay. is a lot of fun. Okay. There we go. Actually, we're a good team. You know, we I just probably open a little stand. There we go. <laughs> Some carnival someday. <laughs> now, you know, we were talking earlier, and there are a lot of different ways to present Struffoli. You there do are. yours one way. Right. I do mine uh, in another way. I actually do them in a funnel shape when right. they're, when, after they're cooked. You do yours more in a wreath like shape, Like a wreath, right? right? Um, you can sort of shape them like a Christmas tree if you wanted yes. to. Yes. Um, the... Uh, or just put them in a, in a lovely mound on a lovely dish as well. So. All right, I know you've got, we're going to fry these, right? We are going to fry them. Okay, so we have oil so we going. Do, we do have the oil heating up. Uh, it needs to be, the recipe that my mother said was it needed to be hot oil. So there was 375? No, no temperature. So I, How I did she look gauge that? about 350 to 375. She just knew when it was hot enough. I, on the other hand, use a thermometer. So, well, you know um, what my grandmother used to do? She'd take a pe little piece of this dough, that's she'd true. throw it in the oil. Well, it exactly. sizzled right up, the oil well, was ready. You're right, and actually that's what my mother did too. And uh, that's, that's how she knew it was hot enough. All right, Father, I think we have enough to go into the first batch of hot oil, right? Very good. I they look beautiful. They're not going to take very long to cook, are they? No, they won't. They'll fry up and puff up in no time. And then we're going to give them a really nice sweet ending, aren't we? We sure are. Okay. <laughs> That's the surprise. Let's go. Oh, wow. You know, look at how beautifully, nicely golden these are. They're not brown brown no, that's overcooked right. they only took what 30 seconds about that to exactly. puff up they look beautiful can i try one? Oh, go right ahead can i have one too mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. they're good the way they are they are good but they're going to be much gonna better <laughs> now what we're going to do is um, put some honey on them Where's one we lost uh -oh. mm. and um i what i did was i heated the honey in some boiling water mm -hmm. uh, just to get it a little bit softer and easier to mm. coat these with because you want them to get well coated, not only because it ta they taste good, but it helps stick together when you try to arrange them in any kind of a shape. See, now this is a little different variation on what what I would do because right. what we used to do is my grandmother would heat up a big cauldron of honey in a pot, okay. then instead of pouring the honey over, we'd put all of these in the Into pot. Into the pot. Well, and stir a, them really. So it, it's you know, equally it's, good way to do it. Right, okay. just how you like to, and you, the thing is, once you start eating these, you cannot no, stop. It's like peanuts, as it, they say. It's real, <laughs> this it's is really the truth difficult. about these. That's why I think they make such big batches of mm -hmm. them, because everyone knows that and the you're not going to be satisfied with just one. What you're doing is really important because you really have to mix this well, because the honey, you don't want all the honey to settle down exactly. to the bottom of the pan. Exactly. And you don't want to put so much honey That's in that right. it's sickeningly sweet. Right. You just want to lightly coat them. So they, they look beautiful, and just Great. by putting the honey on it, it just brings them to life, doesn't it? Does. it? They, they glisten sparkle. beautifully. They do. All right, I think that's okay, good. Okay, now. And then we'll take the uh, dish, the mm -hmm. serving dish, and what I usually do is uh, try to spoon them around, mm -hmm. get them more or less in the shape that I want to make. Yeah. So we're just going to make a simple sort of wreath shape with this, not mm -hmm. anything too fancy. But you could work at it and stack them up like a Christmas tree. Right, I've done that. that I've done that where it almost looks like you know an inver Ex inverted. Uh, like, um, what do I want to say? A funnel. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So it's your choice, okay. however you want to do it. However you they, do it, it's festival it's, food. It's festival food, yeah. definitely. I think it's I think wonderful that you love to bake because you know a lot of men don't like to bake. Well, as I said, my my mother was. Uh, that's pretty. The example there. So um, now, now I'm just going to form this a little bit more, mm -hmm. just to get. And that was a that was a good little, trick that he just used. If you wet your hands, hands it, and you it, want to give this a little bit more shape, wetting your hands will help you. That way, the honey will not stick, stick exactly to your hands. Whoop! I got that one. Got that That's one. mine. Okay. <laughs> there. 
Mm. And then the final touch are just a few colored sprinkles mm. and lightly. It just gives it a real festive, festive look. Mm -hmm. You know, in some parts of Italy, around Naples, instead of using these hundreds and thousands, which they're called right. sometimes, they'll use candied orange or lemon peel. Peels, which is also mm -hmm. very good on it. Also very traditional. Mm -hmm. And there it is. That's wow. our struffoli. We hardly oh. broke a sweat making these. <laughs> They're gorgeous. I think we deserve one. Okay. With the little sprinkles on. Great. To you, Chin Chin. Chin Chin. Mm. Just like my mother's. Memories of childhood. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But we're not done because now it's on to Chin Chi. Okay, what does the word Chin Chi translate to? That's a good question. Uh-huh, I figured. <laughs> I'm learning a lot today. Okay. <laughs> Changey rags, ah, little yes. tattered pieces. Right. Sometimes these are also called gossips, but we're making changey today. And it kind of goes along with that whole carnival type food right. that you just made, the struffoli. So here's my dough. Very good. And it's not unlike your dough, except that in here I have some lemon zest, there's flour and eggs and sugar a little bit of butter. And now this is a dough that we're going to roll out just the way we do pasta. Okay. So you form the dough just exactly the way you did yours. You let it rest until it's nice and soft. You see how nice and soft that is? And now we can work with it. So I like to do that just working with a quarter piece at a time, because you don't want to put this whole right, exactly. wad through this pasta machine. You know this because you've made so much <laughs> pasta. The rest you keep covered so that it doesn't dry out. And then I just flatten it a little bit with a little bit of flour, because you don't want to put this through the pasta machine in a wad, it's otherwise right. you'll strip the gears. And this is just a standard hand crank. Right. Everybody has one, yeah. don't they? I do. I've got a little <laughs> motor here. And so we want to start on the lowest number. I cheat a little bit, Father, but don't hold that against me. That's all right. I start on two, and then I move to four. And basically what I want here is a thin enough dough that is like pasta dough. You can almost see your hand behind the dough because we're going to fry this. We're going to fry it up. And I think the name is just so interesting that the whole idea of rags right, or tatters, right. this comes from, what do you think? The leftovers of right. maybe making pasta, pasta or having some other kind of dough. So what do you do with those ragged pieces? Well, you can fry them up and you can put a little bit of powdered sugar on them, which is what we're going to do. I'm gonna run this through one more time, giving it a little bit more flour. Move that up. And then we can cut this. We don't want it too thick, otherwise it's gonna to be too chewy. And just see how, how nice and pliable the dough is. Get a little hole like that, you just say a Hail Mary. <laughs> okay. Then you turn that off and this is too big, of course, to use just like this. So what I do is I just cut it randomly. And if I want to make gossips, well, then what I do is just take and just make strips like so. And I just take them. Sometimes these are also called lover's knots, just like that. That's gossips. But if you were in Tuscany, this would be called chainchi. So you would make a little slit there and a little slit there. Hmm. Why? Just because it's fun to see. That's right. And it's going to, <laughs> it's going to fry, uh, up, fry up nicely. Mm -hmm. So why don't, you, uh, why don't you make some? Why okay. don't you do a couple of those? I, and also you can, do, you can do different yes. things with this. You can do bow ties, which is something that is always fun to do with children, right. making bow ties. You see how stretchy that dough is? It so you is can wonderful. stretch it. You can even make them longer if yes. you want to. So there's your little, your little gossips. And you know, I think the name probably comes from the fact that you're having a cup of tea or a glass of wine, right. you're talking with your friends, and what are you talking about? Who knows? Oh, that's you right. know, it may be gossip, it may be something really important. important yeah. But the point is that you're having fun together, and that's the right. whole idea of making these. 
So that is very good. If you wanted to do the bow tie version, you see, you just do a little pitch right in the center. Let me take a little piece of this. This is the nice thing about doing these is that there is no rhyme or reason as to how perfect they have to, to look, be, you know? Right. This is almost like making pasta. Where you just kind of pinch the center. So we should make a whole bunch of this okay. because we've got to fry this up. So there's a tray there. Once you get them, once you get these into the, uh, the these form the that you want, well, then you have some oil ready, and you can use either sunflower oil, corn oil. Don't use olive oil. Olive oil would be just uh, too, too heavy for this. There's our bow tie. There's our other. And here are a couple more that we can do. Then I think Great. we're ready to fry. Very good. Now imagine how mm -hmm. pretty all of those are going to look. You're going to get Beautiful them nice and golden that. brown. Absolutely. And they're going to be perfect with Great. wine, tea, or coffee. We are ready. Let's go. I'm ready. So now for these, instead of honey, I do powdered sugar. Okay. So I just give it, this just gives it that real carnival. Mm -hmm. but whenever I do this, I always think I'm walking through the towns of Italy, you know, for some fair that's going on or a sagra. I like a lot of powdered sugar on mine. Do you want to make sure. sure the top doesn't come off the sugar can? That's for sure. I've done that before. Well, uh, what are we waiting for? I don't know. <laughs> Let's, Let's dig in. These look splendid. Now they should be crispy. Mm. And they are. Wonderful. Not too sweet. No, just. Powdered sugar is all you need. Nice yeah. lemon flavor. Exactly. Nice taste of lemon. They're well, wonderful. We did well today. We didn't do too badly. We made two fabulous Neapolitan desserts. Remember the struffoli that Father Jonathan made, and now the chain sheet. If I could do it, so can you. Father Jonathan, you and I today made two classic and traditional treats from around the Naples area. Absolutely. We could really identify with these because they're both part of our childhood. That's absolutely right. Let's tell everybody what you did. Okay, first we uh, made the struffoli, which are small round balls of uh, kind of a pasta dough, fried and then um, coated in honey with some uh, colored sprinkles on the top. This one is shaped in uh, sort of a wreath, and the other is sort of a, a mound, like a, almost getting to the height of a Christmas tree. Right, so you could do them either way. They're right. absolutely delicious. You did a yeah. great job. Thank you. And then I made the chain sheet with help from you, of yes. course. But basically, that was a dough with eggs and flour, sugar, a little lemon juice, lemon zest. They were delicious, weren't they? They were. And then we just Excellent. put some powdered sugar over the top. The perfect way to end any kind of a holiday. Well, Father Jonathan... I really appreciate you letting me come to the college, taking you away from your many duties. Well, thank you very much, Marianne, and I'd like all of our viewers to know that Marianne is actually an honorary alumna of St. Anselm College because at our commencement this year, we had the privilege of granting her the college's highest honor, a doctorate of uh, humane letters for her great work in preserving Italian culture and culinary arts. So thank you, Miriam. Well, thank you for helping me do that. And until I see you, Nella Cucina, again, I'm Marianne Esposito. And I'm Father Jonathan DeFelice. Ciao. Ciao.